so happy that you all came to school prepared to learn today and ready to exercise your knowledge. You're going to do a carousel for me today. How many of you just absolutely love doing carousels? I do too. The standard that we were looking at today was one of the Common Core state standards, reading information uh, 6.7, 6 being for sixth grade. And that basically states that the kids need to look at information from different sources or in different formats. Around the room, if you notice, I have framed in blue paper photographs. These are actual primary sources from the Library of Congress. Actual photographs. You're going to carousel through a series of photographs. I have 18 of them. I don't have time for you to see all 18 today. But what I have done, if you look at your desk, I have a post-it on your desk. I have picked three of them for you to go and see. And there's just posters or signs or sentences or quotes from stories that are posted around the room. And the kids go from one to another. And they have to answer a question about it or correct what's up there. You're going to take <laughs> with you, as you care, a salographic organizer. And you will be filling in some information on your graphic organizer, OK? This is a silent carousel today. This is going to be between you and your photographs. One of the nice things about today's lesson being introductory, I had never tried it as introductory before. But I usually use it as a review. And I, I have learned that with 27 kids, I have to have at least 13 to 14 different carousel stations because it doesn't work when you have five or six kids at this age level rotating through the different stations together. So I've learned to pare it down so there's only two or three. And sometimes, and it really depends on the focus of your lesson as to what's going to be at each carousel station, what you're going to have the kids do, and as well as how many do travel together. Let's look at the second question here. What's happening? What's happening in all of these images? Because now you not only shared yours, but you got to hear from everybody else. What's happening in all of them? Andrea. Kids are working. When do you think, besides the 1980s and World War II, when do you think these were made? 1800s. 1800s? See, I'm getting a lot of different answers. Brian. Ooh, when, was, when was the Great Depression? I picture 16. There was a guy cutting meat. Um, there was a knife, um, something, a lot of wood stuff around there, and a big machine. Now, dig down. Why are you looking at these photographs? What do they all have in common? What's happening? Why in the world am I showing you these photos? Dig a little deeper now. So I think all these pictures are about about kids that weren't like rich and they had to go get they something for so them. yeah money huh? yeah they had to work for some money for their parents or for themselves yeah <laughs> mostly for the parents. I want you to do a quick write and please remember a quick write is not a five paragraph essay. I want your quick write to be one paragraph. And if you look at number four, it says using words and phrases from the group discussion, write one paragraph about the topic. Basically, what I wanted today's lesson to be was a discovery on their part. I didn't want to tell them what the topic was. And I did not want to go into, well, let me show you a PowerPoint. Let's take some Cornell notes. I wanted it to be more of an exploratory lesson for them or a self-discovery lesson for them. I wanted them to go from the photographs to class discussion to a group discussion and finally to an individual writing assignment where they discovered what the topic actually was without my saying, okay, this is what we're going to do today. I wanted them to find out what it was we were going to do.